So I'm, uh, I'm fortunate enough to have uh, Mark Hanchette here with me. He's the founder and CEO of Atlas Motors, and you're doing a very exciting thing, I think, for a lot of our viewers out there. You are working on an electric pickup truck. Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, we started the company with the idea of uh, electrification of uh, the you know, pickup trucks and heavy-duty trucks. And uh, we think that you know, one of the most exciting areas for electrification, is, particularly is in pickup trucks themselves. Uh, you know, they're the, the biggest emitters of pollutants uh, when it comes to automotive vehicles, and it presents one of the biggest opportunities uh, for disruption for, uh, you know, incumbents that have existed for over 100 years uh, that have been developing some really great vehicles. But, uh, it, you know, it's a great opportunity to, to deliver a new solution and uh, really, truly make a leap forward for electrification. Now, you're currently trying to raise a million dollars so that you can build a prototype of your, I think it's your 75T, which is your three-quarter ton pickup truck. Um, and I guess I'm kind of interested as to how it's going with your fundraising. Uh, so the, the fundraising is actually going very well. We've had, we've had a few hiccups in terms of just lessons learned. First time doing a crowdfunding campaign, so trying to understand you know how much we have to do in terms of advertisements and messaging, what's truly important, getting the word out, uh, especially being such a young company with, uh, you know, we're not, we're not big. We, we only have about uh, currently six members that are, you know, working either full-time or part-time on the project. Uh, so building confidence in the industry and building confidence in our investors is uh, something that we've been working diligently towards. And we've had some, some lessons that we've had to learn there. And uh, we, we think we're making great progress considering the big challenge that we have. And we also look forward to, you know, we love the idea of the people that uh, want an electric pickup truck to really own part of the success that we're going to have. That's right, because there are some cool perks for early investors in your company, right? Um, if uh, I think you're picking like four at random who will get uh, the truck. Um, yep. And then there's also discounts for early investors as well. Yeah, so uh, each early investor gets a discount uh, depending on how much they actually put in. Uh, some of them are fairly significant discounts. And then uh, to add some excitement to it, we are giving away some free vehicles when we start shipping it. And, you know, we believe that if you support us in the beginning, you should be rewarded for that. Uh, and, uh, you know, beyond just ownership of uh, the company, it should be something that's fun and exciting. And uh, we, we hope people like it. Now, talk to our viewers about the truck itself. Let's talk about some of the stats that you hope to have. I mean, obviously, you don't have a prototype yet, so we're not going to hold you to it. But what are, what are kind of some of your dreams for the vehicle? So uh, when we kind of started this, we, we didn't want to start off with, well, you know, it's an electrified pickup truck, but you can't tow anything. You can't really haul anything. It's, you know, it's meant for the commuter uh, individual that just bought a pickup truck, maybe they go to Home Depot on the weekends and, you know, uh, do some kind of weekend projects. We really wanted to focus on building a pickup truck for those that use it for what is it, it is intended to be used for. Uh, so we spent a, a tremendous amount of time trying to understand the technology and capabilities, the restrictions that exist out there today with electric vehicles and how can we overcome those? How can we match a diesel or gas pickup truck's capabilities today? And that has to be the goal. I don't believe that if you're going to go after this market, you have to be at minimum one to one, if not better in capabilities and experience than what exists today. If you're not, we're not really making a leap forward and we're making a leap backwards. And so let's talk about like the big numbers that people are going to ask about things like range. What are you hoping this truck can do? So we're very confident we can hit at minimum the 300 mile range. And then in a uh, larger vehicle, like a, a three quarter ton and one ton vehicle, uh, we're very confident we can hit 500 miles of range. And that's, that's unloaded technically. Uh, and the reason why we, we went after that is because that's a typical range of say a diesel pickup truck with a standard 31 to 33 gallon tank. Uh, you can get anywhere between 400 and 500 miles of range. So that's a target that we felt we had to hit. Uh, and then for 300 miles of range, uh, we aim for that target because that is kind of the bare minimum for a, a work truck half-ton vehicle uh, that maybe does some light towing, 
uh, around town. Maybe you're going from job site to job site uh, for um, you know various different professions. Whether you're uh, in the trades, like you're a plumber, or electrician, uh, you're into general construction, or you're a landscaper, uh, and you know your guys are going from house to house. So we we set those goals based on the use cases and. Uh, a lot of the market feedback where individuals said, if you can't do uh, 300 or more miles, then it, it doesn't make it. it there's no value proposition for them. We were talking about charging time. And I guess the, the part that um, that I think a lot of viewers, myself included, are going to kind of wonder about is like, OK, well, Tesla can't charge their vehicles much faster than, you know, half an hour to an hour. Um, how are you going to be able to do it in 15 minutes? All right, so uh, it comes down to uh, selecting the right chemistry and construction of a battery cell. Okay. So you can get, uh, you can apply a lot of stress to the cell, right, and still get high cycle rates, and it's going to last ten years, and still get the right energy density. Uh, and then the other side of it is properly managing the thermal characteristics of the cell. Uh, as the cell uh, gets hot, right, it begins to actually break down much faster, especially when you're trying to pump a lot of energy into the cell. Uh, so properly managing the thermal characteristics of the cell is very, very important. And to do kind of those things, uh, you can't just buy something off the shelf and plug it in. You really have to design the product or the cell itself for the specific application that you're going for. Okay. And what other companies have done is they basically like, Cattle and LG and Panasonic, right, is they've taken common constructions and just combined that into a pack, right? And they've added some thermal management, but as you know, uh, it doesn't work well in hot, it doesn't work well in cold, right? And when you try to charge it quickly, you get degradation in performance. So it's important to sort of combine all of those things, but you have to really design the cell itself to be properly thermally managed and have the right chemistry. Uh, or the right kind of base uh, chemistry and construction for high charge rates and high cycle rates. Now, you could build a battery that can charge in 15 minutes, but you don't have a charging station that can support it, right? And that's the other big kind of hiccup. The, the charging infrastructure is very fragmented. It's very broken. And uh, your experience on you know day one might be you get a great power output from that charging station. And on day two, for some reason, it's lower or you're sharing that with another one. Mm -hmm. So um, we haven't you know, completed, of course, building that, but we spent a lot of time meeting with um, utility companies and, and talking with people that build charging stations today to really understand that problem and say, okay, you know, let's say we have a 100 kilowatt hour pack, right? And we need 400 kilowatts to charge that in 15 minutes, roughly. How can we achieve that? And how can we achieve that every single time? So people who are out there going, well, okay, well, Mark, you're a six person team right now. How can you compete with, you know, Panasonic and Tesla and cattle and all these big companies who must have, you know, hundreds and thousands of engineers working on it? Like, how, what do you say to them when you're trying to do what seems like, an, to me, an overwhelming task? So everything's going to start small. So we, what we have to do right now is we need to prove ourselves that we can do what we're saying we're going to do, right? Uh, you're absolutely correct that, you know, yes, there's a ton of funding, you know, big companies out there with lots of funding uh, that are putting money into us. I think in terms of innovation, it's typically not the big companies uh, that innovate quickly. It's small companies that really don't, we're not held down by, uh, either the internal bureaucracy of how things are done. We're not held down necessarily by the financial numbers uh, currently because we're in a, that kind of startup growth phase. That means we can take really big risks. And that's what kind of gives us an edge is our ability to not follow what we've done before and invested money in before. This gives us an opportunity to take big risks to solve truly valuable problems. Right. Problems that others are not solving today. And that's our advantage. There's lots of, you know, pickup truck companies out there now. Very few, if any, except for maybe Workhorse uh, are doing an electric pickup truck, maybe Bollinger. Um, do you see, um, you know, Tesla as being a competitor to you? And do you see that as being a problem if they enter the pickup truck market? Competitor? Yes. Problem? No. Uh, I think if Tesla enters the pickup truck market, that uh, that helps kind of justify that this is a real 
uh, opportunity, right, for us, for Tesla, for everyone out there. If we're the only person in the market doing this, then uh, it, it, there's not a lot of justification that what we're doing is either desired by the market or it's real. But when we have someone like Tesla enter the market, and we know that they are building one uh, or designing one currently, um, having them kind of jump into the market, that helps support what we're doing and our vision and, and where we're going. And now, uh, if you were to ask, uh, you know, what's my future vision for the company? Uh, you know, today, GM, Ford, and Ram own, you know, a huge majority. I think it's roughly 80% of the market today. I think it's time for someone else to come in and, and truly dominate that market. That's my intent. Uh, but we do need competitors in the market. One, it keeps innovation going. Uh, two, it um, helps kind of justify the market and the product if others are doing it. Uh, now, in terms of, um, you know, other pickup truck solutions that are out there, uh, like hybrid solutions and things like that, I think those are great stepping stones, but I think electrification as a battery electric vehicle is just going to be that next leap forward. And it makes sense to just go for that. Now, you have a lot of interest in your company. Um, I've heard that you have a lot of pre-orders for your truck. How, how many yeah. pre-orders do you have to date? We have about, uh, the last number I saw is only about $35 million in pre-orders currently. Only? Uh, what? <laughs> only? That sounds like yeah, a only, lot. <laughs> only $35 million in pre-orders. Um, but it's you know, it, it's hand raisers. It, you know, we don't take a deposit today. And uh, we made a conscious decision to do that simply because we don't have a prototype yet. So asking people to put $100 or $500 or $1,200 out in something that they haven't physically seen, we didn't necessarily agree with that kind of concept. We thought, you know, here's what we're pitching. Would you buy it? Uh, we've had a tremendous amount of interest in this. We've had a tremendous amount of uh, interest in individuals that want to take our vehicle in some of the most extreme conditions just to demonstrate it and see that it can do it. And, and we're really happy about that. And we look forward to a lot of those opportunities uh, to, to, to really showcase what it can do and prove, you know, to the world that, that we're real and, and what we're doing is, is, uh, it's going to be great. Now you have a subscription option I saw. So basically people can obviously buy the truck outright, but then you're planning on maybe having a subscription option. Talk to us about that. Talking with a number of customers and then kind of following the market trends of, uh, you know, vehicle ownership, people, a lot of people enjoy the lease concept, right? Because uh, maybe they don't drive a, a large number of miles, but they can get a new vehicle every you know two, three years, uh, depending on what the option is. Uh, but it comes with a number of restrictions. And then aside from that, it's the uh, trying to fix the uh, the headaches and the frustrations around maintenance of vehicles, and just just trying to improve the owner experience. So. Uh, we started playing around with the concept of a, a subscription where you pay for a vehicle, but instead of, you know, swapping your vehicle out every month, which some individuals like and some don't, it, it's the idea that this is yours, right? It, it's, it's your vehicle, you own it, but you don't have to worry about it, right? If something breaks, bring it in, we'll take care of it. If uh, you need tires every year, right, then bring it in, we'll, you know, we'll change your tires out or rotate them when necessary. Um, we wanted to create an opportunity for uh, vehicle owners to have this incredibly positive experience around owning a vehicle, something that they don't get today uh, with you know internal combustion engine vehicles and the existing models. Uh, but we wanted to give them something where uh, it's, it doesn't feel like a rental car, right? It doesn't feel like something where today you have a brand new one and tomorrow you have one that's two years old. Uh, we wanted to give them something where, look, this is yours. Use this. Do what you have to do with it. And then when your time is up, whether it's three, five, or seven years, depending on the, the plan that they have selected, right, bring it in, we swap it out for the next generation model, and you just keep going. But you don't have to worry about it. For people who are watching who are like, hmm, this Atlas truck sounds like it could be cool. What's the starting price? Um, where can they go to find out information like that? And also, what what will be the starting base price of the car, do you think? So uh, they can go to our website, uh, www.atlasmotorvehicles.com. They can also go to the crowdfunding site, which is www.startengine.com slash atlas-motors-vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, in any one of those locations, you can find any current information that we have publicly released. 
Uh, our intended starting price for a four-door, four-wheel drive, 300-mile range vehicle is $45,000. Um, we That is our, our goal. That is what we are aiming to hit. Uh, it's a do-or-die scenario for us, I think. Uh, if you can't hit that price, uh, I don't believe it's worth actually launching a vehicle. If it comes out in 55, 65K range, uh, that's not really practical for the industry, especially given that the average price for that specific uh, um, configuration in like a gas vehicle today is around $45,000. Uh, and we've done enough due diligence to know that we can achieve that given trends in battery cost and material cost, uh, evaluations of existing uh, pickup trucks on the market and what it takes to actually build those, uh, you know, low volume to high volume. And we're very confident we can hit that price. We just need your support to help us get us there. I thought it was cool that you were showing that there's a lot of aftermarket. You're thinking about aftermarket for your truck. Um, I'm not like a huge aftermarket person, but I know there's a lot of people out there who are. And so tell me a little bit about, about that. So uh, it, in the pickup truck industry, uh, there's kind of two sides of it, right? One is the work side of it. And in that aftermarket industry, think, uh, you know, replacing the bed with toolbox uh, configurations or flatbeds. Uh, maybe there's other accessory components for a work-based application. We want to make that as seamless and easy as possible for those companies that really build useful products to, uh, to build high-quality you know, products very quickly. And we want them to actually launch those when we launch our product not a year later or half a year later. We, we want them to get a head start. So we launched a, uh, or, well, we will be launching an aftermarket portal where they can come in, basically they sign an agreement, uh, and they will have the ability to request access to 3D models, to engineering information and data that helps them build high quality products um, and innovative products for our vehicle. And then the other side of it is the enthusiast. So if we're building a pickup truck, I live in Phoenix, half the vehicles here I think are lifted with big tires. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you might not think efficiency with electric vehicles in terms of that, but uh, that's not necessarily what's important because none of those guys do that for efficiency anyways. Mm -hmm. it, it's making sure that we have a great uh, supporting kind of uh, um, team on the aftermarket side. We want people who build lift kits and bumpers and you know, crazy, you know, great, amazing accessory products for the aftermarket kind of enthusiast industry to have that same ability. Today, the way it works is they, you know, they may hire a third party, scan parts, create a 3D model, build that and install it on the vehicle. And sometimes that leads to bad fitment. It might lead to safety concerns and things like that. We want to change that mindset. We want to give them the ability to get proper information uh, so they can design high quality, safe, really reliable products right for the enthusiast market well i was saying to everyone here on the team that i was going to wait till i met you uh, before i decided to invest and so as people are watching this right now they're going to see a screenshot of me investing in the company because i do believe in what you're doing i really think it's important for our viewers to really consider going to your website checking out what you're doing and consider investing as well i really like what you said a few minutes ago about the fact that you are you know you're a small team you're innovating and um you're not approaching problems the same way that big companies do they have a lot of bureaucracy they cannot innovate fast and we're in a time right now where everything is fast innovation and if you innovate fast enough that's your moat against the rest of the the, your competitors and these competitors are using their just big bloated bank account as their moat and that's not going to last um i think it sounds crazy to some of our viewers to say well how can this guy compete with these big companies or tesla but that's the same craziness that was said about tesla you know 15 years ago right just a bunch of guys in a garage trying to build something and everyone's like well that sounds crazy yeah, it's a little crazy, but that's what it takes. That's that's kind of the American innovation is that crazy, uh, you know, get in the garage, figure out a problem and solve a problem. I'm really excited that you guys are working on it. So thank you so much. Thank you. We really appreciate that. We're number 65 on the list for the Tesla semi truck. We're going to be driving all around this big country of ours, showing yep. off, you know, what electric vehicles can do. I would love to stop by your headquarters when that day comes and uh, stop in and see how you guys are progressing. And I'd love to yep. check back in with you guys from time to time. Absolutely. We'd love to have you. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, Mark, for taking time today to talk to us and our viewers. And uh, I wish you guys the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much.